Uh, this is Dawal Patel. I am founder with Nifty HMS. Uh, we are a patient management system for, and we are uh, specialized for veterinarians, uh, dentists, and physiotherapists. Today we have Dr. Uh, Nikita Pujari on our channel. Uh, she is a renowned veterinarian uh, in Maharashtra, and uh, she is young and talented and has worked uh, with pet animals uh, extensively. Welcome to our channel, Dr. Nikita. <laughs> Hello, hi. Thank you for inviting me, Mr. Dhawal. Most welcome. So, why don't you introduce yourself? So, my name is Dr. Nikita Pujari. I, I'm, uh, I've done my post-graduation from Bombay Veterinary College in Biochemistry and I've also done my PG dip from UK in Veterinary Physiotherapy and Rehabilitation. Uh, I have my practice in Mumbai. We have two branches. We have one in Khar and we have hospital in Andheri. So, yeah, we have been practicing for about three years now, four years now almost. Great, <laughs> great. So, uh, let us know, I mean, how, why you wanted to become a veterinarian and how it all started, if you can tell us more about that. Yeah, so veterinarian, I wanted to become a veterinarian since the day I heard the veterinarian for the first time. That was back in my second standard. My grandmother has always been an animal lover. So probably that genes just came in my dad and then in me, we always used to rescue animals, feed animals in our building, in our locality, treat them with the help of local vets. And that, some, that passion basically turned into profession when I had to decide in my 12th standard uh, what I have to actually do. And yeah, okay. there was literally no other choice. This was the only option that I had decided since second standard. So. Nice. Physiotherapy, nice. I decided after my fourth or fifth year, like veterinary physiotherapy in specific. So, yeah, that okay. was another. So, you talked about that you've done uh, your post graduation from UK. Uh, uh, so, tell us more about that. And, and you had an option to work over there, but you chose to come back. How did that went? <laughs> so, uh, I, so, veterinary physiotherapy was not a known subject is not a known subject even today that a uh, degree does not exist in India uh, to study for that matter. So by fourth, fifth year, I got to know that when I started actually attending clinics and everything, I understood that a lot of cases like arthritis, bond losses or paralytic cases, they were being left unattended or uh, there, there were a handful of things that, you know, veterinarians used to do, like just prescribing medicines or, um, some painkillers or something just like that. But I realized if physiotherapy can work in humans, then why not in animals? Especially in right. animals who, you know, the only option was euthanasia in most of the cases. Like uh, in case of paralysis or something like that, veterinarians used to just say, Ki nahi, put down kar do, there is no life or anything like that. But later on, I realized, no, there is a lot of other things that we can do. So I applied for a course in UK. I went over there for a few months. I studied over there. But I always wanted to come back. I already had a clinic over here. And I started my journey then back in, I guess, 2018-17. Okay. Nice. So the, the tenure in UK, was it for uh, <coughs> was it a full year of course you did? or No, no, no. So, no, no. No, no. So it was basically distance learning since I, uh, over there, this course is generally done by veterinary assistants or nurses. Over here, that concept itself does not exist. So because I had already done my veterinary course, I had, uh, I had luxury of skipping the theoretical part. Like I, had to, I could just submit it from, you know, over here, I had to just submit assignments and everything. And I had to just go over there for practical learning. Um, okay. So modalities and everything, or protocols and everything, I learned over there of how to use and uh, all this things on uh, equines and in canines, felines, also small animals, birds. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, in uh, in terms of uh, treating uh, pet animals and uh, domestic animals, you all you were specializing in dog dogs and cats, or you were specializing in. Uh, you know, bigger animals, what's your specialization? Or you just my, do physiotherapy? Uh, so my specialization is in cats and dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. I majorly treat small animals. Uh, physiotherapy is what I do 90% of the time. Uh, rehabilitation, forming the whole protocol, physiotherapy, hydrotherapy, acupuncture and everything. They all fall under rehabilitation category. 
I've also treated rabbits, birds and all. But yeah, 90% of the patients would be cats and dogs. In our clinic, of course, there are fish patients also who come in and uh, birds and other exotic animals also. And for that, we have a different veterinarian who attends to them. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, tell us more about if you have encountered any challenging case or any special case that you, you uh, think that, you know, our viewers will be uh, interested to know. In. Uh, so I had one. Oh, there was this one case um, wherein, uh, which was rescued by me only back in 2006, 2017. I had rescued her lying stone cold on side of a pathway. Uh, I just as I left my building, I just uh, saw her. I saw that uh, she's just lying stone cold. I wanted to just pick her up and keep her on her side because I thought she's dead. But then I started feeling a little bit of heartbeat and I un understood that she's breathing, but it was very shallow. So I went to a nearby yes. NGO at that time, um, gave her whatever medicines and everything that were required. So NGO was closed at that time. I just went in. Uh, luckily, there was one uh, helper who was there and he allowed me to come in when I told him that I'm a veterinarian and I just saw this cat. Did the local whatever medicines that were required. The NGO luckily held me out and kept the cat for two, three days because she was not in any position to travel actually to my clinic, which was in Bandra at that time. Okay. So after two, three days of stabilization, uh, I took her in at my clinic, but then we realized that she's completely paraplegic. And after right. like uh, stabilizing her for another week or so, we started with her physiotherapy part. Uh, we started using lasers, electrical stimulations, exercises and everything. And today, of course, after a month or so, she started walking, running, jumping and, and doing it's all nice. her normal activities. So it was amazing to see from for her to go from that stone cold state on side of a pathway to a girl who started dominating my other cats. So, yeah, that, that is something that we look, you know, uh, when we see any kind of cases, that is our whole goal. And, right. Yeah, and that is the most satisfying thing. Yes, I, th I think that's truly amazing experience you have had. Yeah. Uh, so, how old is that cat now? <laughs> no, so that cat, uh, when she was rescued, was probably 12, 13 year old. So after say okay. eight months of age, after eight months of staying with me, she uh, she was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease. She just okay. passed away last year, but she lived a whole oh. life. She was completely fine. Yeah. Okay, okay, right, right. So, yeah. uh, do you do you want to uh, give any uh, specific advice to any pet parents nowadays? I mean, a lot of people are having pets. Uh, any any advice that uh, you want to give to pet parents? As a veterinarian? Um, so, uh, major advice that most of the pet parents require is to um, have good awareness. Whenever they get a puppy home, go to a vet, ask all kind of questions, not to just randomly self-medicate or read on Google about things and try and experiment on their puppy or dogs. Just to ask veterinarian if this is correct, if this is not, what or even, you know, if you are very inquisitive or you have good knowledge, then probably can just ask what kind of medicines can be given or cannot be given to cat or dog because even that is very different. So, um, that and then to know a basic uh, knowledge about vaccinations because uh, especially in Mumbai, we get a lot of viral cases in cats because they are not vaccinated. Even from right. pa parents who, you know, who are from good families who can afford also when they are not uh, getting their cats vaccinated just because they don't have good knowledge. So they can right. just go to vet because I'm sure any vet will, you know, explain them basic management. So right. yeah, that. And then uh, certain other things that are coming up nowadays, um, like uh, genetic issues, like hip dysplasia, or even early onset of spondylosis and all. Even, you know, uh, like early x-rays, diagnosis, if that can be done, if, you know, pet parents pay a little more attention to how a dog is walking or their daily behavior, any changes. You know, small, small things can give big clues. So, yeah, right. basic understandings. Great, great. Anything you want to uh, give advice to young students who are, uh, you know, trying to uh, migrate to other countries and do practice over there in, in terms because you've done a course from here in UK and uh, what, what advice would you give? I mean, how is your experience with having your own clinic and is it a good choice or versus? I mean, if someone is trying to decide whether to stay in India yeah. or to practice outside. 
so for young vets first of all they should take it easy nowadays i'm encountering many young vets or even i went through the same stage wherein you know um we all are very confused oh my god now our fifth year is done our sixth year is done what do we do now um we have to start earning we have to choose our profession we have to choose our department pg and everything i would rather suggest if you have to take a break of a year just explore probably do internships or externships even if you have to go to some foreign country or if you are interested in a particular subject like um, if someone is interested in avian or even physiotherapy or some other field just explore you don't really have to choose in that particular month or next 6 months or anything you can do um, courses under various vets or uh, you know i don't think any of our uh, vets in even in indian community will deny any you know uh, youngster to not come in their clinic to learn something so right. you can you know shortlist a different kind of things uh, like we have few interns interns who come to us who you know learn about hydrotherapies and all or who come to us to learn specifically endoscopies so we right. encourage young talent that way and as far as going to foreign country is concerned if you have to settle over there of course you have to give a lot of examinations like navli and all but if you have to do certain courses then that's way easier i feel um also you can um uh, mail certain universities or certain professors or even certain doctors and ask them if the, you know you can go over there uh, learn certain things stay over there for a month or two learn things if you if you have that opportunity and if you want to stay back you can do that or if you can learn and come back to india and uh, you know give give it back to the society that would also be great give back your knowledge especially because you would have something that no other vet has if you can bring that uniqueness even that is great true true absolutely true Great, I think it's nice talking to you, uh-huh. uh, Doctor uh, Nikita Pujari, and I'm sure a young veterinarian will get inspired from your story. Thanks for being on our channel, and we love to see you again uh, for Thank further you. story. Thank Thanks you. again. Welcome. Bye. Bye.